Um, when I first came to this uh, swamp, I'm town, um, uh, de decades ago, I would say the dominant uh, uh, sentiment was just free trade overall, free trade, absolutely, nothing wrong with it, got to just keep doing it, both sides agree, more, 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 freer, 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 trade, trade, trade. Um, the 1980s came along, and we actually, for the first time in decades, started to see considerably larger uh, trade deficits. In 79, imports and exports were pretty much comparable. Um, trade had been roughly balanced as a share of GDP. Uh, and uh, the number uh, of jobs created, again, this is uh, using EPI's data from SWA, the number of jobs created by exports and lost to imports were actually about equal, which is kind of what you'd expect given balanced trade. Although, as I said, there are different propensities for capital and labor with our export industries being more capital intensive and our labor into, uh, and our import competing industry being more labor intensive. Ergo, even balanced trade can uh, affect the composition of jobs. Uh, Translating uh, these numbers into, uh, 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 well, at any rate, uh, in, in the interest of time, let me just uh, point out that uh, by uh, 1989, um, uh, the trade imbalance had, had grown to something in the range of 2 3% to GDP, and uh, we had significant impacts in terms of lost uh, manufacturing jobs. Deindustrialization books began to show up. I think it was Bluestone and Harrison, The Great U-Turn, uh, a, a very influential book. Um, and interestingly, by the way, and this is probably underappreciated, manufacturing employment didn't fall. Uh, in those years. U.S. manufacturing employment was pretty constant over the 80s, but of course it fell as a share of, of total employment. Wage inequality began to take off in those years. Wage losses, pressure on unions. So there began to be a, a, a significant um, debate on trade, which kind of um, uh, reached uh, a, a bit of a, a, I don't know, you say a high point or a low point with the NAFTA fight. Um, uh, and again, I'm not going to go into every point part here, but um, I would argue that the trade consensus has shifted, and a lot of this has to do with something Cass Sunstein called the other day, and he wasn't writing about trade, but he, he was writing about how we, how debates change, and uh, in, in the New York Times, they're not bad, and he talked about the, the way people change their minds about things is often through what he called surprising validators, and this just kind of resonated with me. A lot of people started saying, you know what, trade actually has some costs as well as benefits.